when He can come and when He can go. You think of the passage uh, when you're looking at, at the life of Job, how Satan has to ask God's permission. I think that we, uh, that we forget that. Satan comes to God and wants to attack Job, but knows that unless God allows it, he has no possible way to get Job. We seem, we, we seem to put God and Satan on, um, on the same pedestal, as if they're equals. And as Christians, we would, of course, say, well, you know, no, we don't think that God and Satan are, are equal. However, that's how we live. We act as though they are enemies and equal forces, if you will. Um, people, Christians included, often live in fear of attacks of the devil. Um, I've, I've known... People in churches that, that have been or that have wanted to quit some, uh, some sort of addiction and finally just gave up trying to quit because every time they started, uh, the devil attacked their family. And while they would never say it, what they're doing is saying the devil attacking us scares us more than disobeying God. They're putting God and Satan on the same level. But in doing that, we're forgetting something pretty major, and that's 1 John 4.4. 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The devil has power. I'm, I'm not denying that. I, I'm not going to try to say that, that he doesn't and that some of the things he does. I'm not going to try to say that the things he does aren't scary. Um, I've, I've uh, seen the hold that he can have on people. and No matter how powerful he may seem, he's nothing compared to my God. Amen. And I honestly think that if we could figure that out, that would do a lot for our Christian walk. If we could figure out that, that they're not equals. They're not on the same plane. It would give us a whole lot more boldness if we could figure out they're not equals. Boldness to tell people the gospel because no matter what happens, he's greater that's in us than he that's in the world. It would give us uh, more confidence, confidence to stand for what's right because no matter what happens, he that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Have you ever stood for, uh, stood for something and um, at first you were unsure and a little nervous, but then someone stood up beside you and suddenly, you know, your confidence is back? Someone's there with you and your confidence is back? Um, when I was 16, 17 area, I had um, my driver's license and I kind of had a knack for finding trouble. Um, I didn't get in trouble myself. I just always seemed to be around it. Um, so my dad always hated when I told him these stories. One time I was uh, in a store and there was a guy there who was um, at first verbally abusing, I don't know if it was his wife or girlfriend, but, but just, just tearing her apart um, verbally. And then at one point he got mad enough and he hit her and knocked her to the floor, middle of the aisle, and he just closed fist, nailed her, and she falls to the floor. Um, at which point, me being 16, 17, not really thinking, because most 16, 17 year olds don't, I stepped in between he and her. And quickly noticed, yeah, and again thinking, you know, I'm not going to let him hit her again, quickly noticed he's a really big guy. <laughs> You know, I didn't notice that until I was standing in between him and the lady who was on the ground. He's a really big guy. And the thought went through my head, this might have been a mistake. <laughs> and he got, he got mad. And, and as I told him to, uh, to leave her alone, he yelled some words I won't repeat, told me to mind my own business. And again, I thought, this was a bad idea. What am I? Maybe I should have minded my own business. No, this was a mistake until... Two or three other people in the aisle stepped up and said, yeah, leave the lady alone. Amen. And suddenly, that, since I wasn't alone anymore, you know, there's that confidence back. You're not worried about it. Um, it's one of those times, though, I came home and told my dad the response and his, or what happened, and his response was something along the lines of, I'm proud of you, son, don't ever do that again. <laughs> here's, here's the point. When, when others stood beside me, I had confidence to stand was easier then. Um, knowing that God is with me, who is greater than anyone or anything that this world has, can give me confidence to stand. Give me confidence to, um, to be bold in what I believe. The first thing I see in this passage is that God tells Satan when he can come and when he can go. They're not equals. 
The second thing I see in this is when God tells Satan go, he goes. Now notice this, we don't see Satan arguing with God over this. He doesn't say, well, wait a minute, God, my punishment isn't fair. This, you know, I don't, I don't like this. We don't, see, we don't see any sort of debate from him at all, any sort of argument. We, we see people trying to argue their punishment with God in the Bible. Um, you know, we see some telling God, my punishment is more than I can bear. They're trying to argue what their punishment is. Uh, we see people arguing whether or not it's, it's fair, but we don't see that from Satan because he understands something that we struggle with and we... I just mentioned this. He understands his place. He understands what I was just saying, that he isn't equal to God. That's why, um, that's why we see Satan trying to mimic God. Because he understands he's lower than God. Um, God's the lion of the tribe of Judah. So Satan, uh, so Satan is, is like a lion. Those sorts of examples. Everything that, that God does, Satan tries to copy tries to do something like it. You don't mimic your equals. You don't try to be like those who you're like. Does that make any sense? You don't, you're, you're not trying to model your life so I can be just like the person who's right where I am. You, you try to mimic, you try to copy people who are where you want to be. Um, little, think of a little uh, kid playing baseball in the park. You know, they don't try to have their stance and their swing and their throw just like little Jimmy from down the street. Try to have their stance and their swing and their throw just like Ken Griffey Jr. who got, went in the Hall of Fame day or, you know, whoever their favorite uh, baseball player is. They try to mimic the person who's where they want to be. Because Jimmy, down this, from down the street, is their equal. The player is who they want to be. Kids in school, um, they don't try to mimic the people who are just like them. They all figure out who the, uh, quote, popular kid is, and everyone tries to be like that person. Because the kid who is where they are is where they are. They try to copy the person who is where they want to be. And the same is true the same is true with Satan. He recognizes that he and God aren't equals, and he also knows that where God is, is where he wants to be. He realizes that, that, God, that God holds power over him, and that when God speaks, he has to listen. He has to listen. So, when God says, Satan, this is your punishment, whether you like it or not, that's it. Because what God says goes. He doesn't try to argue it. He doesn't try to, uh, to you know, see if we can come up with some compromise, God, that maybe, you know, I, I see your point, but here's mine, and maybe we can try to find some happy medium. No, what God says goes. Which, again, is something that, that we can learn. It seems odd, but as I studied this message, I kept thinking, boy, this is something we can learn from the devil. This is, you know, an actual good thing we can learn from the devil. That, that when God, or what God says, simply goes. Because again, unlike Satan in this, we try to fight God. We, we want to argue our punishment. We want to bring ourselves up to where God is. And if we, um, if we, I'll just put it this way, if we can reach the point where we see what, whatever God says goes, it's going to save a whole lot of heartache. The third thing I want to see tonight is, um, and I'm just going to put it this way, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed from this passage. The power that God held over Satan in Genesis 3, he still holds today. He still holds today. Just like when God told Satan in the garden that this is your punishment and this is how uh, you'll go, he still does that today. As I was, um, as I was reading it and studying this passage, here's what, what hit me. There is... is a lot that we can learn. Some things that I've pointed out already that Satan has figured out that somehow we can't. Um, there's a lot that we can learn in this passage, but what really hit me is there's an incredible amount of comfort that can be taken from this passage. And I've never really thought about it before um, in reading this, but, but a lot of comfort that, can, that we can get from this that while, um, 
all of this is happening. You know, there's a lot that happens in these 14 verses. The, the first sin and hiding from God and the blame passing and excuses.